same time AD carry in this match. We've had three games in the LPL so far. They were all losses, so you're right. <laughs> <laughs> not not really something well, right, you expect to see, but even going back before that, that world somewhere, right? That like summer split of Huang Fong on Jin and Sword Art on Bard, I think that meta was just yeah. so great for that team. Is this time around, IG gonna guarantee themselves a strong pushing bot lane a very early on, something with a lot of comfort as well as it's been highlighted so much at just how this meta even suits IG in different ways, like their bot lane with Marksman coming in for Wink, who was that yeah. long time Marksman player. And I like that we're finally getting a bit of a, a change up to where it's like, okay, IG have had things like like the Maokai going through pretty much every time. We've had the Elise on the opposing side this time. With IG not opting for that, they'll have the Sichuani, Beichuan getting his hands on that Maokai, so can give them that same engage potential and, and I'd say threat. Uh, when you have Maokai ultimate and something like the curtain call, it really means that members of IG aren't safe no matter how far away they think they are from the opposing team. And this time around, Hoya hoping to get himself on a comfortable champion in this Renekton and something that theoretically YS Cam shouldn't be able to punish too much. But now I want to see how many more bands they deliver over to this top lane. Jax and we are already off the table. Camille, the next champion to go. I wonder if they do just say screw it and just take away the I really as well and just try to push yeah. YS Cam either onto the Jace or again further down that pool of champions he feels comfortable on. I feel like banning the Aurelia is just a safe play, right? From the side of TT. Like, just try and make sure the YS Cam does not have that comfort in the top side, especially when you've got a Renekton anyway, kind of the default top laner at this point in the LPL. Um, over to IG though. Banning the Gwen. They obviously think Yukal's taking this Renekton mid. Yeah. And it, it's definitely possible, right? Yukal, someone who's able to do that. So the flex pick coming on through. And now it's going to be out if they ban Comfort or if they're fine with him picking it up, considering they do have a lot of like point and click CC coming through in their draft this time around. If you did go for that very mobile top laner uh, for YS Cam. And they, no, they, they don't care. They say, okay, we're getting him off yeah. Comfort. We're going to push him deeper down his pool. You still have the chance of flexing, which which I would really like if they do end up doing. Maybe go with your other bot lane option on four and then save your last soul laner for five. Try and guarantee you can get the best of both worlds for you, Cal, and Hoya. Let's see where they do end up going as IG deciding what they want to ban away from either you, Cal, or Hoya. Uh, it's, uh, or I guess Hong Kong. We're going to ban the Sivir. Try and remove some of the wave clear so that the, the push is guaranteed uh, for Arn and Wink with the Ash and the Varus. And now you'd anticipate the AD carry slash support to be locked in here and then have that counter pick available for the final solo. Yeah, I never even try to predict the bot lane. Oh, it's coming out. At this point, <laughs> it's, it's cursed. <laughs> like, what can you do? Yeah. There are so many available picks. I mean, Draven's open, but I don't think you want to play Draven into this. It's going to be the Ziggs coming back in again. So once again, going to have that, that stall factor there. Again, the ability to, to quickly break down turrets available. And, and just a lot of semi-globals still coming through the reins. Looks like 4YS Cam, once those four top laners are gone, Jace is just the go-to option to be able to play with. We'll still allow him to fight up in that top side. You have some range to be able to pair alongside with the, the Varus arrows coming through down in that bottom lane. And now it's going to be all about where Delve wants to go. Something like the Azir is still open if they wanted to go that route. We talked about how, how like things like the Ziggs can be annoying later on in the game for that, but I don't think it really matters all too much. Yeah, I, this is not relevant to the draft. I'm just saying there is some serious hair on this IG roster. There is some serious hair going on Ooh. in this IG roster. It's going to be the Silas yeah. locked in in the end. Something I forgot about just because of the lack of priority we've seen from it in this series. Usually it is one of the go-to mid laners coming through, but with, with Maokai on the other side, being able to take away that ultimate and have that same effectiveness is going to be huge. And now you, Cal, with what he's looking at, you do already have two huge sources of AP coming out on your team. And Yoni's been a champion. You've really been seeing make a resurgence uh, in the past few days. Two games coming out, both wins. Uh, it was Scout and someone else. You know what? We can find out though. We have the, we have the power of, of you know the internet. That's true. We do have the internet. That's one really good thing about living in the modern Western world. All three. Access to the internet. Scout, Knight, uh, and Cream. All three finding wins on the pick. And now, I mean, a lot of all in threat there for the side of TT. Maokai, Yone, Jin opening up the curtain call. 
on the side of IG, it, it's still similarly scrappy, even though you do have some range tools to play with, the Silas, the Sejuani. As well, yeah, there's a lot of playmaking ability out of both of these middlers. Yeah, Yukal, his playmaking was what was needed for TT to find the advantage. You're gonna wanna see it once again here in this game. Oh, you can hear the Jios coming on through. I love the Jios. I, I always miss the Jios. For people who don't know, sometimes we do have, I mean, this split, it's been good. Yeah. The previous splits, sometimes we do have game sound and audience sound. Sometimes we don't. I, <laughs> so would, I would go beyond sometimes. I would say <laughs> the vast majority, <laughs> the majority of, of the time, time yeah. we did not have the Jios the worst in our part, ears. And the worst part in my mind was always like quirky packages of like always yeah. having to look at a mini map and you just not knowing when that, when that comes like, up. I, I really don't think you could understate how much of a difference audio makes in this game. I don't think people realize until they try and play or cast without audio. And then you realize like how much you're relying on sound cues in a lot of League of Legends. Like Corky Packages we were, is obviously a great example. We were talking about example. this the other day, but like, you know, I guess as humans, like sound registers faster than, you it's know, like what we're able to see. It's like four times faster, so it's crazy. I, don't hold me to that, but it's something like that. Um, we've had a lot of pub style conversations recently like that one for example uh here we go though lots of range in the bottom side 380 carries and a zix it does feel like it's gonna be a matter of dodging skill shots if skill shots are dodged it should be uh i don't know where i'm going with this sentence i was gonna say an easy lane this is not gonna be an easy lane on either easy. side <laughs> dodging skill shots is hard they're pro players i definitely feel like 4 tt as we can see now it's gonna be a bit harder the the volley just coming out from ash is just so oppressive that the range it covers, but who cares about bot lane? We said soul lanes are the focus. Beichuan hoping to find something early against YSKM. This minion wave is huge though. Like if you 2v1 in that minion wave, that is gonna be hard, but if you can clear some of that minion wave first and then Beichuan comes in, now the Hoyas level two, maybe there's a window here. Beitron is being so patient with this. Hawkshot did just come out from wing across the quadrants of their jungle, but YSKM. Here we go. Time for the play. Flashes on in the knockback into the stun. And it means slice and dice doesn't have to be picked up by Hoya. One more auto will do the trick. And Beitron grabs himself first blood. YSKM thought he was playing safe enough. He was paying, you know, a bit of respect behind that mini I can't wave, really blame him, honestly. Yeah. But still enough distance to be covered for TT to be able to find that first gank. But with that, you know, there's the opportunity cost. Now Baytron gonna lose out on his blue buff on his bottom side of the jungle. So if Gideon can make something work with this, it'll be huge. Looks like he's hovering around now because IG's bot lane do have a massive wave of their own. But they know with Baytron making that gank top, he's gonna recall. He's gonna head down towards his bot side. So Gideon just ends up waiting out for this scuttle crab. Page one still just gonna be on level two. A little knock back onto Arn, but doesn't quite pull him under the tower. Nice attempt there. Gideon does grab that crab for himself. And it's just gonna be infinite amounts of push from this IG bottom lane. Hong Fong and, and uh, Yao Yao really struggling just to survive at this point. You can see the CS deficit in that bottom side already is massive. It's rough. You can just see how, again, how much they're struggling. I like on the opposing side of the map, Gideon goes for the recall to head up towards the top side, hoping to get that scuttle crab for his top lane as well. Maybe even try and find something for YSKM, but I think that can be a little bit rough. Hoya, very close to getting this wave in and guaranteeing the bounce back for himself. Yeah, so we'll crash that wave. Can uh, head back to base and get some items for himself. It's a fairly slow, fairly quiet early game here, considering Gideon has spent the first five minutes of the other two games this series literally in Baytron's face 100% of the time. Very different start things, and it might just be down to the fact that Baytron didn't pass like he did in the previous games. He went early on and got a gang, got Hoyer ahead. Now, uh, Baytron even manages to get the topside scuttle, considering the fact that since both TT's lanes did have uh, Pryo, Gideon not feeling comfortable to try to sneak away that one, not knowing if Baytron. Maybe like he does his Gromp, but then puts straight up towards that top side, not really wanting to have to run interference with how strong you, Cal, and Hoya will be at this point in time. Still should have a bit of a slight experience lead under his belt. It looks like for Bay Chuan, maybe gonna hope to find something in top side again. He wants uh, 
Face one more kill up in that top side. But he won't find it. He's going to go over to the Kriggs instead. Deep ward from Gideon there. Let's try and spot out any rotations. Yao Yao just spent so much time roaming around the map in the last, you know, minute, minute, 15 seconds. He's still only sitting on level two. Look at Wink. Wink's about to be level four. Yeah, it's not ideal. It does mean Wonk Wonk should be getting somewhat of an experience advantage himself as well. I don't know if that's necessarily worth it to have your support literally be as thick as paper, but... I think later on I can understand it when you're like, okay, like we're at the level six mark for Jin and like we have the, the yeah. key abilities up to get down our CC, but definitely this early, like you're saying, I mean, if Yaya oversteps, you have summoners, those are gonna get burned, but then, you know, a potential gank can come through and just set up for a very yeah. easy time up against the CT bot lane. And it's not like Huangfong is a level up on Ana or anything like that. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just two levels behind Wink with really no benefit from the side of TT so far. Beitron moves back up top side though. YSKM is not having a fun time. Like, he just does not get to move towards his lane here. Dove moving over. They need to kill him fast if they're going to get a kill onto YSKM. Health bar is low. Can they finish the job, though? He's moving over towards his teammate. Oh. Base one doesn't get stunned. It's blocked. YSKM surviving. Hoya gets the kill in the end. Dove trying to chase it down. There's Patron there. Trying to get slow. He's trying to get CC down. Gideon moving over. Still only level five, so no ultimate. And it will just be the kill they get out of dodge. That was so close. The fact that Hoya flashes right into the Abscana duck, I thought it might bite them, but they get the kill. They're going to be able to back away and just once again, kind of putting the punishment down on You Should Know Me. Yeah. Feels like a lot of IG this game are going to be relying on the advantage of the bot lanes picking up on the opposite side of the map. Hey, it does feel that way. And honestly, like like you say, the, the stun coming out onto Hoya, I thought that was going to be their doom, but. Actually, might have saved Beitron's life because he only walked away on about 100 HP. Rook comes out onto Wink as Yukal wants to make something happen. Bait sealed available. If he can land the skill shot, oh. does get one for himself. This is a 2v1 right here. And he's going to go under the tower to try and get on. Won't be able to find it. Rook comes out, but there is no follow-up from the rest of the team. And you're happy with that, right? You might not find a kill, but taking away the flash from the Varus means it is going to be a bit riskier to play as aggressively as they have been, especially if Beichuan starts dedicating any amount of attention towards his bottom side. We're going to get a replay of the top play. Look how early on Dub starts to move over. Wyatt's game goes in. The, the knockback comes out. The stun from Hoya. And Dove here, absconded up right on to Hoya comes through, but yeah. still manages to get the Q back in time. You're right, though. Could have potentially saved the Beitron if Beitron walked up and he would have eaten that ability, but... I don't think Hoya knew that that was coming. No. I think he was just trying to flash onto YSK, no, but that flash may well have just won them that fight. That is something else. Yukal has stuck around in this bottom side, grabs himself a plate, basically for free, as Bongbong and Yao Yao have moved to the mid lane instead, both uh, bottom lane is in fact moving to the mid lane. Gideon grabbing the Herald for himself. And in the meantime, TT trying to answer with the Drake. Yeah, we're going to see what happens. On approaching from one side, the of IG coming from the other. TT, I mean, they could have potentially put some threat onto on there and just like turn down towards the bottom half yeah. of the fight. But I think with things like Chains and Corruption <laughs> still available, you lock one member down, it gives enough time for the reinforcements of IG to follow through, and that could be just the one fight for their side. Still going to benefit, though, from free Drake. Yeah, I mean, oh, very take those. kind of TT, honestly, just to leash a DPS the Drake for them and then just walk away and let them have it for free. Uh, unfortunate for TT, I guess they thought they could do it faster than they could. Uh, Drake does get taken by IG. So, both neutrals across the map taken simultaneously there. Yeah, yeah, desperately tries to finish the ward. We'll be able to do it. Zombie ward is there. The fourth shot will go on over. And now Gideon moving down to the bottom side does have that Herald, but I think it would be a little preemptive to drop it here. I guess not. I guess not. They just want to get those plates on to our. And I mean, they've been, they've been keeping up the push, so they're going to have a way for it to follow up with as well. I'm wondering if he's going to, like, if you're going to put this down, walking into the jungle, like you see here, is what you should look to do. They're going to be able to back out, but clears away a ward. Gets on a control ward of his own as well. Roots coming on through. Can they find anything on? Tanks it and cleanses it. The satchel charge knocks oh. him up. Oh, the double flash comes through. There's a chain of corruption as well to stop the engage. So. All summoners on cooldown now for IG as YSKM getting attacked by Hoya once again. Here comes everything out from Hoya, but really out of damage to, to take the chase out. 
especially like that close to the turret, you've already used some of your cooldowns coming on through. We'll be able to guarantee the wave gets in and now should look for the reset, but doesn't do all too much. But I still think it's any win when like Wyskin isn't finding early kills, isn't yeah. giving early resources from his team. I mean, even now, right? Still sitting on a tier and two long swords. Will back, so finally does have the straight of Durek and now gets a bit more punching power under him. But all of that strength goes back to what we highlighted before on finishing up the Ghost Blade. Has been the one getting everything. Almost a 20 CS lead over Juan Fong on TP side. Oh, Hoya. He's not even looking at his screen. <laughs> he didn't see that he ruined the Crux. Oh, dear. But, uh, yeah. You're absolutely right. And a very slow. Very slow game three here. And I think that it goes back to what we were talking about before, right? The fact that IG coming into this series were flawless so far in the LPL. Three wins to their name. Weren't able to, uh, weren't able to just get that clean 2-0 like they have in their previous series. TT, the total opposite story. And so game number three is everything, right? Game number three for IG continues their win streak. Game number three for TT gets them their first point of it would be a huge boost of confidence for TP. Still very early on in the split as well, so if we can start building up momentum now, it won't be too late. Is Chen and Crystal Arrow? Yeah, Gideon follows it up with a bit more Frel Yordian action. Beach one gets root. There's roots everywhere. Everyone's rooted. As here come the bombs from the other side. Yukal dives into the middle of everyone, but take it down. As it's Gideon to find the kill. One Funk just trying to throw the ultimate, and that's it. But the cleanse going to keep him safe. Now and a little IG. lackluster for TT, honestly. Yeah, I, I, you know, we can go over it once we get the replay, but IG now at least have the opportunity to put threats on both both uh, mid and bot lane. You can see Delph pushing up now, but leading down towards the spot lane, the threat of the lean from Gideon forces Yao Yao and Huan Fong to back up. So you can see how far forward On is playing on our screens right now, just getting even more resources under him. Even though we've been talking a lot about YS Cam, a bit about Dub. I mean, in those first wins, On and Wink were a huge part of it, winning a lot of their lanes. We come into this, they look for the pick. Looks like they're a little bit unsure themselves with, with waiting out some of this engage, waiting for Dub's Malkelton to come through. But it was more telling me of Bay Chuan. They start to run away. They come in realizing, I'm sure Juan Funk's coming. Hey, I have Zig Zulti. I can throw that and join the fight. Yukal gets chunked a bit low, so he thinks to go in. And it all looks very... I think kind of misma mismatched yeah. from their side. So maybe had they all just committed right away, jump onto that one target, maybe you can burst out getting there. I still think it would be quite hard uh, having things like the Aftershock as well, but they end up just going down slowly, giving over summoners and not able to answer the play whatsoever. Yeah, a bit of a tough one for TT. Just mean that there's almost a 1,000 gold lead in favor of IG, a much closer early game than what we saw in the previous two of this series. Drake coming up in 30 seconds as well. And I feel like both teams are in a spot where they shouldn't really want to at least try to contest. Yao Yao is even level six at this point after that early XP deficit. Speaking of, gonna drop that ultimate immediately. Maokai does block the Crystal Arrow, but full shot goes wide anyway. And now we, we stack up and we stare down in the river once more. Now you're missing four ultimates from the side of TT. You committed two from IG, but I feel like they should still be feeling fine. Hoya does have his teleport available, though. He could be the difference maker to fight here, and YSK wouldn't be able to follow up. He would just, just have is. to focus on that top lane turret. Quite a far back TP from Hoya there, but just wants to get over this wall. Wanted to do it out of vision, perhaps. And I think everyone realizing on the side of IG that they're going to have to back away. Nice attempt on the steal, but it's not going to go through. Bage one to grab that Hextech Drake for him and his team. Now TT can return to their lane assignment twice. Okay, I'm just going to recall, not going to try and commit for the tower on the top side. Not over greeting for that one. Hoya is going to opt into staying down in this bottom lane, trying to hold. I don't know how much he'll be able to do, even with how strong he is, considering it's just a few autos away. You have the range there. Still would be quite hard for On or Wing to walk up, especially with On being half HP. Yeah. So they are just going to end up backing off in the end. But second Herald to spawn, so our eyes are going to go up towards that top side. With TT having their bot lane in mid, they should be able to push this one out relatively fast and maybe start hovering up towards that side first. But uh, we've already seen pings come out from both sides. Yeah, and uh, Hoya just gonna be able to instantly clear that wave so he can get his race set off. Or 
get moving up towards this Herald. As you can see, the rest of the game basically is already up there. Wise Camp, no TP available. He's maybe going to look for a tier one on the bottom side or maybe move up late as Gideon takes a chunk. But like you say, it's difficult to get through this Sejuani, especially now Radiant's been finished as well. And it looked like Huan Fang wanted to back, might be sitting on enough gold for the, the Leandris at this point, but the call being to stay in Contestus Herald, not gonna let that one come through. They're just gonna start this one outright. YS Cam is about to have his TP up, so we'll be able to get this turn and still might be able to join if a fight happens, but no, Herald gone so fast. Yeah, no fight comes on through. Beitron gonna use that Herald recall to get out of the pit as well. So a nice little pickup for the side of TT, traded by IG from Tier 1 in the bottom side. But the Herald, in theory, should mean a tower for the side of TT. So, again, in theory, should be a fairly easy trade. Especially when you don't have, like, plate story about or anything like that. It should be pretty easy breaking down one of these turrets. TT haven't gotten a lot of damage done on 10 of them. I mean, I'll be surprised if any autos have come through against the bot lane turret. I believe Hoya maybe got a bit of damage on top. We see a bit of damage done in mid, but uh, that's why IG have been able to maintain this this bit of gold lead that they've had. A lot of it being from Lights. the fact that they have plate structures. On the last time we got the gold comparison was 1.5k up over Huan Fong. I wouldn't be surprised if it's even further at this point. The only kind of saving grace for TT is how much Hoy is up over YSKM. YSKM still being, like, finally gotten to a point where he can just start to farm freely in the side lane yeah. and getting those items under his belt. And I will say for Huan Fong as well, things are going to get better now. Like, once you finish the Leandris, that's really a big breaking point for the six where you start to feel like a champion instead of just... Oh, Cleanse is there. You start to feel like a champion as <laughs> opposed to, uh, to, like... Early lane Ziggs is like, he's a small rat that throws firecrackers. Late game Ziggs is a small rat that throws bombs, you know? It's, it's a different experience. I agree. It, it does feel quite bad. Like, you're, even things look like like your passive coming out, like, like on your autos, and your, it just really feels like they do nothing. Still not going to feel too much when Gideon has been the member just standing in front, soaking up everything. Uh, I think IG have done like, a nice job of this time around on not stepping too far forward, even if we said the margins for that in game one were, were very slim. Uh, Dove is in a whole heap of trouble right here. TP's coming through on either side as well. They lock him down. The curtain call comes out, but Dove walks away. Yukal misses the ultimate, flashes after him and gets taken down himself. YSKM with a huge pickup there. Yukal falling back in his chair, devastated by the play. And now Vatron next on the chopping block. Stun comes out from Gideon, and it should be an easy pick up. Bombs finally here from Wonfog. Vatron, 1 HP, oh. and the Satchel charge! It's not enough as I, he goes down in the end to the arrows. I gotta say, TT, they're lucky that this isn't 20 minutes in the game, or that would have been a barren start for yeah. IG. Great response, like you said, from YSKM. The, the team just able to follow up incredibly fast. Should be able to turn this into a top lane for a take. Dragon's gonna be up soon as well, but we'll see here. I mean, they have to burst him out fast, but has the dominance for himself. <laughs> the knockback from Beichuan kind of gives him enough distance to where then his flash can get him out of the curtain call. And then YSKM comes in, an incredibly easy turn onto the Yone after he misses his ultimate. And then TT left flailing their arms, trying to escape. Yeah, yeah a little bit. A little bit sad for them at the end of this play. And, you know, I said Wong Fong's going to start getting damage. That all did not do damage. It did not. <laughs> uh, he arrives a little late to the plate and uh, doesn't really add a whole lot. Three to two on the scoreboard, but the gold's still within touching distance, right? It's just under 2,000 in favor of IG at the 20-minute mark here. As Drake number three comes up onto the map. It is only a Cloud Drake. Granted, Cloud Drake got better this year. It's still not, still not going to just win you. No, I like that both teams are kind of angling for it. IG have a, a turn to mid to where TT have a turn to bot potentially available. They're going to go for it. Hoya needs to back off. So they're going to get a turn out of this for free. TT looks like they should be able to burn it fast enough, but who knows? I don't know if they can here. Is Dove trying to buy time to Drake? What HP? Okay, taken by Beichuan in the end, who actually walks forward to dodge the ultimate. Gigantan Beichuan keeping himself safe here. Fourth shot goes wide. TT, nobody goes down. It's a dragon for a tower to keep on trading things for their towers. How valuable is it really going to be in the long run? That's going to be the question. I think it could have ended up being a one for one as well had uh, they not just postured and you could have walked on bottom with Baron up. I guess not. Yukal um, 
hell had Yukal walked down and hit bot lane turn like he originally passed. It would have just been barren for IG, but IG, they don't care. They're going to start it up anyway. A lot of their ultimates are down, so not as easy of turn potential there. Yeah. I mean, there's no blue trinket available TT either. Hoya has to just walk on in. Baron peeled off from IG, want the fight instead. Dove looking for Hoya, but he dodges the skill shots very nicely done. Ooh. And Yukal tanks the arrow and zips back to his clone. Really well played by TT. I don't know if that was intended, but that was the perfect timing for it to come through regardless. IG bought enough time for that Enchanted Crystal Air to come back up as well. And that's what they were really banking on to be able to get picks from. But now, I wonder if they go, nope. Are just gonna end up backing off at the end of the day. Twice camp having a wave up in top side. I like that both teams just keep turning and, and the potential for a scrap, yeah. it never dies. I feel like the the stare down has very much been the story of this series where they are following each other around the map. I love the proactivity from IG there as well, basically saying, look, if you don't come and try and fight us, we are gonna just take this Baron for free. So forcing TT to respond. TT do respond in kind. Two drakes in their favor with a gold lead still marginally ahead for IG. And it does feel like with Baron on the cards, everyone's going to have to be focusing on that top side. Yukal and Wisecam both headed towards the bottom lane. Wisecam with TP already up. Yukal will be up in a few seconds' time, so they can both happily stay in that side lane. We are getting closer to more item breaking points on still being. Actually, two items and two items now as Wanfong did back and pick up the Morello. I think On is still sitting on a little bit of gold, though. Uh, and across the board, yeah, we, we don't actually have huge item advantages or disparities no. in either direction. That's quite a big deal in the bottom lane as well, because Zix's items are a lot more expensive than Varus's. Like, yeah. Lidali items generally very cheap, so... Oh, yeah. On his own up here, Beitron and Yao Yao moving over. Turret survives for the time being, and Yukal in the meantime does get a tier one down in the bottom side. So second tower of the game for the side of TT. And that means we're actually even in towers after everything IG did earlier on to find themselves those advantages. Still quite a lot of vision denied from TT by IG. We just saw how dark it is in that top side river. Beichuan gonna just try and get some information by throwing out the samples. Yukal could be in trouble here, Gideon easily go for a big old flank but just walks over the ward instead i think realistically gideon if he walks towards the blue buff or the gromp to try and flank there and yukal's already there that is not a 1v1 that gideon is gonna win for himself so take the safer path and i think i, I could agree with that and yukal's oh wait we have a 1v1 up in top side oh yeah pretty low on hp here gets underneath his tower Dove using that hijack, stealing away the Dominus to make sure he has presence. Yao Yao gets caught by a very long range arrow. The Chain of Corruption there to follow it up as well. Doesn't even get to move very, I mean, the, the arrows from Wink have been on point this game. They've been great. We said it, used to be a Marksman player. He is incredibly happy in this meta. And IG doing a great job of using their pick tools. Because it's kind of what both comps are about, right? You have like Jin Maokai looking to pick on the, the opposing side, long range bomb to follow up. You have Wink setting up arrows, followed by like Glacial Prisons from Gideon. And your scaling factor for both sides is kind of your mid lane. It's like you, Cal, and Dove being the ones to step up and then carry. If we don't just keep going down the path of like whichever team can, can set up for the pick and we actually get to a fight, it's going to be about which mid laner can find their angle. Can you, Cal, finally hit a meaningful ult? Can Dove, you know, come in on a meaningful flank, get onto Huan Fong with an abscond, uh, abscond of duck, take him out early? These are the things we'll be looking at. These will be the questions that we have to answer, but the next question on my lips is, is Drake coming up in 30 seconds, who's gonna have control? It feels like IG are the ones with control of the map at large for the time being. Does TT finally clear away some of that vision stronghold that IG have had on the top side of the map, but they're just shifting it down to the bottom side of the set now. IG just have such a strong like posture over mid wave as compared to TT. I mean, it's so hard for Juan Fong to be able to walk up, even if you have the cleanse, like just threat of like Enchanted Crystal Arrow, Chains of Corruption, this wink. Still quite far away, but knows he has to get out of there. Yeah. We were talking about earlier, I mean, Yao Yao opening like Curtain Call, like both these, both of these compositions, it's, it's so cool about, again, the amount of like long range engage tools are available and seeing which teams are conscious of it. Cause IG have done a much better job of playing around it than TT have on the opposing side. Yeah, definitely. 
Feels like IG, generally speaking, are, are playing this one quite well. Slow and steady, but that's exactly what it needed to be. Hoya trying to contest the Drake by himself here. We'll get us done. We'll get Dominus and YSKM gone before the fight even starts. Gideon trying to escape over the Dragon Pit wall. Chain of Corruption does some work with some arrows from on, but not enough to find a pick and return as Yukal now pushing this mid wave. Uh, Jatiti turned to Baron here. Gideon's still alive, but. With the enemy top laner down, it could be a window. They want to force a fight. They have numbers advantage. The thing I'm concerned about is they don't really have too many ults online. Even Hoya, you really want that Dominus to feel and be a tanky frontliner. Arrow. It's Hoya. Not the greatest target, but a good bit of follow-up damage. And Baron helping out as well. It's enough from IG to push TT away. And TT, unfortunately, don't really get what they were looking for. Yeah, if, if IG would have committed more to the fight when uh, YS Cam was getting picked off. That was really what you were hoping for is Thunder Talk, but without it, I, I get what you're going for, trying to force that Baron, but you just really don't have the tools to turn. They can easily poke you out. We'll see here. Boya gets the stun. They go in. Really, like, finally some damage coming out from One Fog that we've been looking for, and it's enough to be able to get the pick. But the Chains of Corruption, that's what leads to TT not being able to find more like they would hopefully want. Yeah. A little chunk there onto Wan Fong. A lot of long range damage in this composition. Wise Cam actually using his flash in that previous engage as well, so that won't be available for him. Patron could find some roots, but look at the damage that On is doing now. Patron's got to get out of there. WQ will easily finish the job. Down on the top side. Hoya dominant oh. early, looking for Wink here. He's on his own in the bottom, but it doesn't matter. The bombs come in. The curtain call is there. What a play from TT. Now looking for more as well as Yukal's on the top side. Dodges away from Dub's ultimate. Very nicely done. Aru goes in. Has Hoya got a slice of dice? I don't think so. And the ults come back in. The satchel charge is big, but it's not big enough. One for one. The reason I was so surprised to see the pick on Wink come through was just how low members like Beitron were on the side of TT if a fight would have, you know, ended up starting like we just saw one. Oh, yeah, Beitron. yeah. Beitron. Beitron wouldn't be able to follow up. Is Yao Yao? Is He's he a brave man. He's a very brave man. Forced to flash at the end. I don't know why. I mean, he didn't have vision, but you could expect that they're going to be in your jungle at that point. Beitron and Yukal here. Trying to hold the line so that the wave can be cleared for mid lane. So IG not going to be able to get more off of this. Yep, not going to turn into a Baron, which would have been quite a risky call, especially considering they should know that Poya does have TP available. And it's just the Poe coming out from his bar is doing so much. I think this will prevent it more of an engage coming out in the last skirmish. And TT, we saw their Juan Fong take quite a bit of punishment. All right. Let's uh, have a recap of what had happened here. Hoya, really, really proactive here. Gets the stun for that Hog Fog to bomb in on top of. Really nice. They combo. find one, but I feel like this is where you have to disengage. You look at the health bars of your other teammates. You know people like Maokai, people like, I believe, Ziggs. Actually, Ziggs isn't too low, but Yaya almost half HP. There's no way for you to follow this up. Your Maokai ultimate's already down, so you don't have ways of locking anyone of IG down. Yeah. It just sets up for IG to get the return to kill onto Hoya that felt like it didn't need to come through. Yeah. And it's like Yukal basically doesn't exist there. Like no. without his ultimate, there's no universe he can jump in with Hoya in that fight. So a bit of a tough one needed to back off, like you say. So it ends up being a one for one. A gold still just 2,000 between these two teams. And it does feel like this is the, the third game that we were hoping for, right? The culmination of this series. TT, again, looking for that number one win. We'll see if they can find it. Kurt Cole comes out on, slowed by the first shot. The grasping roots come in. Is Gideon happy to tank up for the rest of his team? Couple of ultimates blown for not really much gain. And this is what we've seen consistently in this game, is TT utilizing their ultimates, trying to find a pick, but never able to get them to stick to actually get the engage. And then IG know they don't have to worry about pretty much anything for the next, you know, 60, 80 seconds of the game. No real threat coming through Yukal. Will still have his ultimate, like maybe Hoya dashes in, gets a stun, but... Yeah. I thought that we were gonna try and make a play onto Dove on the top side there, but he's just gonna be able to clear away the wave. TT using the moment of respite they had just to clear away some vision for the time being. Complete vision control of the Baron area for TT, but IG, it's their turn to move into the area. 
I feel like TT just feels so pressured considering they have things like Grenekton. They, they have like a lot of bursts coming around. Let's get in. Might have overstepped here. Will be rooted. Vatron and Yao Yao don't have much damage to work with though. This here comes Yu Gao's try and finish the job. If they can find the jungler, it would be massive, but they cannot. Oh, the sapling! The sapling finds him. It's a one for one, but with the jungler down, IG surely can't turn onto Baron. No, IG. Gonna have to back away. TT gonna be happy with that pick, and they start making their way down towards Dragon. This would be third Drake for them, getting them on soul point. I, I mean, give that sapling a medal. The absolute hero sapling. He's hunkered down the whole fight, waiting in the brush, knowing his time is coming. And then Gideon wanders cluelessly in. What a moment. Baytron getting the kill. And now a Drake off the bag of it. Imagine your first death being to <laughs> just a random arbitrary sapling. Outplayed by run. the sapling. Oh, oh no. dear. No, I, uh, but I, Gideon's had such a good game as well. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, look, he couldn't have known. He couldn't have known, but either way, funny, and funny moment. Someone, again, sad to highlight, who really just hasn't had a good game is Yukal. Like, Yukal has not been able to find ultimates on a meaningful target and really get the damage to stick. It feels really hard because when you look at TT's comp, you kind of need Yukal and Hoya jumping in together, I think. So one of them doesn't just get outright bursted down by the members of IG. IG have a ton of CC as well to, to like once one jumps in, lock them down and burst them out. Without that coordination, that just really isn't going to come from it. And IG playing with their CC so well to make sure that those opportunities aren't successful. I feel like the, the problem we're seeing from CT is that the only real way of like engaging a long range outside of just Maokai ult hitting someone meaningful, which we're not seeing happen, is pray that a sapling hits someone and Jin can W off of it. Like that's their answer for the crystal arrow on the side of IG and it doesn't seem to be working out for them yet. Gideon stuck in the corner here, taking a bit of damage. Just Hoya's gone way too far forwards there. Will be punished for it. Doesn't have the HP. Or oh, does he trying to walk away? Dub now gets onto Beitron as well. Bit of a trade back of health as Yukal gets into the mix, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Dub just confidently charging forwards. Gideon finally burns down. Another sapling! <laughs> Another sapling onto Gideon! If <laughs> TT wins, we get the sapling <laughs> MVP. Oh my god. I cannot actually believe that. Beitron. Caught out by Dub, it's a good little root from Yao. Yao is here, comes the Varus, but the arrow goes wide. And he will survive. Yukal threatening in the top side. They IG, they, they, they just can't commit. Oh, no way. No way. Yukal doesn't know. He lacks critical information. Okay, they get away. They're He's just fine. never able to get in there. They're never able to get up close, and when they do, Again, it's like one member of Castle Stray. I'm sure we're going to get the replay there, but like the slice and dice from Hoya even closer to the members of, of IG. Like damage coming out, it's here, and it's like, no boss, that is not where you want to go. Again, the amount of lockdown, once you're in, you're in, and you are going to go down. We're going to see here Gideon. I want to see how he dies. He takes a fair bit of damage coming out, a lot of that being from like things like the Ziggs, and then yeah, uh, the, the Maokai sapling damage, what finishes him off in the end. Yeah. I didn't even see this happening. Like maybe it was off of the roots. Especially that. the fact that TT are constantly playing from like a pushed in like lane state. IG doing a nice job of like, you see now, pushing mid, pivoting up towards top. You would typically get control of that wave. You're not even giving them angles to try to come around, find flanks or, or coordinate and engage. It makes it even harder to set up those, those engage tools that you were hitting on. Gideon gonna be able to get himself a chicken and get out without a single point of damage sent his way. And I will say, some of these fights, you know, across the course of today, I've been gaining confidence in TT. Especially game number one, I was like, ah, this team has changed. This is a, a growing roster. Game number three, I'm losing a lot of that confidence. I think this feels completely discombobulated. I think they should have stuck to the Scion. Yeah? Get the Scion, have a big frontliner. Like, these games have been just so brawly, so scrappy, having something that can absorb all that damage and like a guaranteed engage tool. This is obviously very hindsight, but I love Sion in game one. Yeah. I would have been down for it every game. Sion would have been great again. Do you know what I would have loved to see? I don't know if this is good in the draft, but Zack gives you that engage. We've seen tons of Zack in solo lanes and stuff. So I look believe cute. it was, uh, you remember like those like pre-season tournaments that, that we had where it was yeah. like showing off the main player of each team? In VCS, uh, they had compositions that were 10 tanks. <laughs> uh, like a tank in every role. I would have loved that. Malphite, Zach, Zion, I mean, yeah. let's go. I would have loved that. I'm not sure that's necessarily 
the best <laughs> selection of champions, but I would have loved to see it. I absolutely would have loved to see it. We Here don't we know what the best selection of champions are. That's true. We are but mere mortals. Yeah. <laughs> TT, however, trying to be immortal. Uh, I don't know if Baron will really achieve that for them, but they're going for it regardless. Gideon getting onto Wong Fong, but forced back in the end. Dove there on the side. It's going to be a smite fight, isn't it? Are we actually oh, going to 50-50 this one? Taken by Beach One. Dove forced away. Gideon down to the bombs. No, it's another sapling that gets it in the end. Dove gets into what? the fight line with Wait. UCAL's there. And TT actually done this? Yeah, TT. They start the Baron, they force them in. And IG, they actually don't manage to find ways into the pit. By the time they do, it's too late. The Baron's already down. And this is the lifeblood that TT have needed. All I needed to do was say I'd lost faith. This is a, another one of those CLG kind of teams. All we had to do was talk random nonsense <laughs> about, I guess, five K, I don't know. TT, they got it done. Dragon now up with Baron pushes oh. coming through his Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Goes wide, but Chains of Corruption don't. Everyone missing everything, but here comes Hoya with the flash in onto Ice Camp. Not enough. Bit of damage there, but it's enough to zone them away and get Soul guaranteed for TT. They get the Baron, they get Dragon Soul, and surely get an opportunity to swing this game in their favor. And we're gonna see Ultimate comes out from Quan Fong, able to cleanse and get away. Good Maokai Ultimate from Bei Chuan to, to buy even more time. Stop Gideon from getting in there. And Oya zoning off the other members, doesn't allow it to come through. Bait Gideon tries to get the steal, kind of separates himself by going for it. And sadly here, Dove left in the situation where Yukal jumping over the wall to help out his AD carry. Honestly, the zone control was kind of the MVP there for me. Like Hoya not allowing the bot laners to get involved in the fight. The early Maokai ultimate buying even more time for the Baron to get burnt down. Just a lot of those like tools utilized to not give IG the fight that they wanted. And one thing that's worth mentioning as well is we're getting to the hyper late game six mode where like, even Baron Minions won't survive against this thing. Arms in trouble. Crystal oh. Arrow, it stops Beach One. The knockback is there. The Saplings, the bombs. He walks away. On survives. Yao Yao in the backside survives. Dove as well. Nobody going down just yet. Oh, you're on the front line. Yukal trying to join in as well. But it feels like IG have the upper hand here. They're pushing back. They're trying to get onto Hoya. But the bombs, the Saplings, they're stopping the advance. Health bars low for TT. But IG just can't finish the job. And Wink does it again. On would have for sure gone down in that situation. Enchanted Crystal Arrows have been on point for most of this game. And Beichuan stopped in his tracks. You see, I believe it was Yao Meow getting like hunted by Dove on the opposite side of the fight. And all the momentum from the Baron immediately halted. We're gonna see here, Ultimate comes out. Curtain Call hits, heals have to come out, but really that one Enchanted Crystal Arrow stopping it. And then Dove making sure no more shots of the Curtain Call are able to come out on the back side of that fight is... Uh, Good little twisted advance there, Gideon? actually, from H1. Gideon, oh no. This is not the play you want caught out. Another <laughs> arrow! Again, how does he keep doing this? Gideon's still gonna go down. It doesn't actually matter, but hey, it looks really cool. You know what? After last year, after the amount of criticism given to the IG bot lane, pretty fairly, <laughs> yeah. I, like, like, like I should say, like IG's bot lane was looked at as, you know, the weakest part of their team in 2022. It's just so great to be able to like look it on and wink and be like, let's go. We have like good things going on, great skill shots. Again, and, and some of these, these former matchups against RNG doing well in the laning phase. It's been such a turnaround yeah, for really it, has. this bot lane. And it feels good to see that, especially for Wink, who has been a part of the IG roster for a long time and often in and out of the actual main team and often put on the back seat. Another arrow lance. Even just around in, in the LPL for a long time, right? Like thinking back, E Stars, like back when he was like under the, the RNG organization as well. Star. That I 2020 E Star team was so high. Oh. If, uh, uh, if IG make like a run this split, that's who they most remind me of. Yeah. It's like a random amalgamation of players brought together who you don't really have like super high expectations for come in and get the work done. Yeah. Just like I believe ESARS finished like fifth in 2020 spring regular season. Weren't able to do anything in playoffs, so they did it like immediately go down, but still. But it was exciting while it lasted. Yeah. And, and that's what we're hoping for for IG to be mildly exciting for us for a short period of time. <laughs> 
I think they might be hoping for a little more than that. <laughs> here we go, Gideon engaged upon here on the front line is him and Hoyer. Well, Hoyer's the one going down. A great little arrow stops the curtain call, but in comes Beishwan. He's alone versus five. He needs some help from his team. And the burns just aren't enough against Gideon. It's a pick for IG. IG gonna be able to walk away happy with that one. Still not even really losing out on any summoners in that. TP coming out from Dove, but not having to utilize anymore. Same for TT. They didn't they didn't try like have to commit all too much in terms of trying to find those picks and find that fight. But once again, IG, if they're able to keep TT at arm's length, they will be able to win out. We've seen the punishment coming from YS Gaming on has been massive and we haven't talked about items in a while, but we're at a point where, I mean, we're closing in on full builds on both sides, right? Yeah. It's like, I mean, we see Sterelda's Grudge, uh, GA built for the Jays. Heck, we have GA built on on as well. More defensive tools coming out. Death Cap in the mid lane for Dove. Death Cap built for Juan Fong. I mean, Death Cap Void Staff, he's hitting like yeah. a truck right now. Juan Fong is headed towards Horizon Focus as well, which that ultimate, the long range cues are gonna really hit home. And this is the thing, the longer the fights go on, the more value you're gonna get out of it from champion like Ziggs. But IG are trying to make these much burstier fights. Get a pick and get out. Oh, nice sidestepping. Make sure that the bomb doesn't hit anyone. And now just playing with vision up towards the spare and not letting them in. Just gonna start this one right off the bat. Moving over through the mid lane. IG might just be able to burst this one through. As Baytron denied entry completely by Ahn. Hoya is over the wall though. Dominant has popped. Here comes Yuka. They flash away and he has to zip back out of the fight here. Dub threatening the back line as well. So there's no support for Hoya. But the bombs still coming on through. IG's health bar is getting fairly low. Dub still going for more though. Baytron the target getting over the wall as Yuka threatens him. Pushes him away and there's one. It's a one for one so far. The route dodged by Wink. These fights are so close. They're in touching distance. But TT, they've got the inside track on mid lane. No, they want more. Kurt Call comes out. Gideon being the target for the time being. Oh, Wait, what? what? I just sniped page one. Oh my god. Arn might die to the chickens at this point. He's got a red buff though. Yao Yao moving forwards, looking for the deadly flourish. Here they go, flash on forwards. And it's for a GA, but Yao Yao's gonna go down. One fun collapse the bond. This might be it for IG. As Yukal try to escape now, he's got a GA. He's teleported in, but he's in a 1v3. Tried to help his team, but he sacrificed his own life. They're trying to chase him down. Gideon over the wall, trying to get the slows here as Yukal gets a bit of healing and he actually walks away. Oh, and just looking too juicy. Baited the members of TT into the fight. YSKM able to TP in. Gideon able to jump through to follow up. And TT just getting a little bit too bloodthirsty and getting punished for it. This game is everything I want out of a game of League of Legends. We're 43 minutes in as IG will take themselves a Baron, and the gold is still 1,000 apart between the teams. Wait a second, can they actually get the Elder Dragon here? Dove is headed over. Gideon making a beeline as well. TT, I don't think they've got the damage to do this. No, no, the gauge already gonna potentially come through for the side of IG. They only have two members here though, but I think TT might need to turn. Yukal trying to get onto the backside. Dub here getting low on HP. The curtain call is there. Gideon low as well, and it's taken. The Elder taken by TT, and it swings back again like a pendulum this game. Back and forth, but with the Elder Dragon, there's no way why SKM survives the play. Knocked up and taken down. It's three kills in the fight for Beishwan. Maybe they've done it. I mean, they have they have the damage there. Long death timers on the side of IG, but still, you do have barren dub minions you need to contend with. And on gonna try and dish out the damage with these arrows. TT's these, still gonna look for it though. These bombs even scarier than they've been all game with an elder dot on top of it. There goes the mid lane in hip tower. 20 seconds on Gideon. That's the fastest respawn. The IG bottom lane, the highlight this game for the team need to step up. It's big damage coming out, and they've actually done it. They've held on to the game. The amount of wave clear, the damage, the Baron up minions. It was all too much for the side of TT. TT though. Look at Wink's health bar. That has been burning for about half an hour at this point. He's been able to survive, but I'm still impressed. 
with TT's fast decision making to just go for this Elder. Realize recalls are going to come out. We're going to be able to find this one. They did just leave it up to, you know, a spite fight at the end of the day to see where it would, like, whether it would go down. But they're able to get it. Great job uh, from Beichuan to secure that one. And then turning that into pick on YS Cam. Now, though, they really need to find a fight, make use of this buff to actually be able to end the game. Because it's not we'll never. Every fight before this, like the last three or four, have been going solidly in favor of IG. TT, though, with the fact that they're up in kills and up in gold. Yeah, I think this is impressive. maybe the first time they've been up in gold. I, I, it's been very close the entire time, so it might have swung uh, one or two hundred either way. But now pushing towards this bottom side. Like you said, Elder Dragon buff is, I'd say, about 45 seconds left on it. Maybe less than that, in fact. Yeah, 25. 20, 20 seconds on Elder. Trying to push to the bottom side. Oh yeah, being the front line that his team needs here. The wave just eradicated, but the same will go the other way as well. Yukal dodging a crystal arrow, it's huge. On oh, might go down here. One more hit would proc the dots. He's actually burning, he might go down anyway. Oh, they and got there it. goes Yukal. The redemption play for the TT mid laner. A second in hip down, a pick onto Arn, who's been a highlight player for IG, and now a chance to come down the mid lane. But do they have the damage to finish the job? They've run out of Elder Buff at this point. I don't know if they can win this 4v5. I don't know if they can finish the job. No, and Juan Fong is so incredibly low. They still have to worry about accelerated shot class. You Yukal cow. goes in, he misses his ultimate though, and just has to exit the play once more. The roots come on through. I don't think there'll be much follow up here. Hoya have to tank up a bit of damage for his team. TT surely have to back away, but they're just not leaving. They just want to finish this game so badly. Yukal going in, trying to get on the stuff. Wink force back, dove on the front line. Stun comes out onto Yukal. He's into GA. Juan Fong still going strong in the back of the fight, but does he have the damage to finish these kills? There's a pick onto Yukal, and the health bar's so low for TT. IG. Desperately trying to chase them down. TP's oh. into the base. It's an arrow dodged by Hoyer. This they game is pure carnage. They don't have a wave to go in, but they're looking to find an end. They're trying to stop recall timers on the opposing side. Can TT make it back? Bait one's back in base. The minions are about to die. This means they can't do it. Duff burning down. YSKM burning down. Look at the dots. The buff from the sky. Duff survives, but turns it around. What is that damage? <laughs> Onto Yao Yao, and Duff somehow gets out. It is, what is this game, Larry? It is absolutely insane. Two inhibitors taken by TT, one inhibitor taken by Invictus Gaming. It's all gonna Woo. come down to, I wanna say it's all gonna come down to one fight, but with the shenanigans we had, <laughs> who knows? Who knows what it's gonna come down to, but we're gonna see here, TT really wanted to make use of the fact that the strong Varus is dead, look to end the game, but they really don't have the tools there. I mean, IG for so long, we're able to prevent this push with Baron up minions, still get the health wires low with the accelerated shot class. And then once they all in, into champions like Sejuani, like Silas, they're able to lock you down and turn with that damage so easily. Yeah. I mean, Dub right now, I was gonna say Dub is huge, but everyone's huge. Everyone is pretty much full build in this game. Hitting like a truck. <laughs> and guess what, Larry? One minute until both neutrals come back onto the map. And you just know that more carnage will ensue. Six items finished on one point. Six on Yukal here. Six on multiple members over on the side of IG as well. We are in the hyper late game. We're almost at a 50 minute mark. You asked for a 70 minute game earlier. We might just have it. You know what? I was, I was very much memeing, but we didn't get the 70 minute snooze fest that I was referencing. We no, got, no, we did we not. Got, I don't know what we got, but I love it. <laughs> I'm loving every second of it. You know, we got the match of the week after this. This one isn't even the match of the week. It feels like the match of the week right now. We were talking about this earlier that when you look at this on paper, you might be like, ah, whatever. But IG always exciting. TT potential always there. IG, this could be their first series loss of the split. TT looking for their first series win. All going to come down to this next yeah. probably 30 seconds of the game. So much down to who lands poke. Arrow goes wide. Roots are in. Arms in the middle of nowhere. Whoa. Bob lands. The birds are there. The curtain call might be the curtain call for IG. It's in the meantime, Dove taken down in the backside of the fight. Gideon on the front line. IG taken apart. Wong Fung with a flash satchel charge. Takes a bit of damage, but he's happy to sacrifice a bit of health. 
for the play that might win the game. TT find three. TT have managed to do it. IG got separated. The kills are there. IG's domination of the LPL, it's coming to an end. It certainly is. And TT are going to get themselves chalked up on that scoreboard. Nothing Gideon and Wink can do about it. No amount of Freljord can save them now. One Fox somehow living through the play. And on to the Nexus they go. Thunder Talk Gaming get themselves a win here in the LPL. It's so great to see for TT. Look how excited they are. UCAL, absolutely ecstatic. And it's one of those things, I can't reference it enough, coming out from 2022, where this team was on an upswing towards the end, where they did have a good showing in Demacia Cup. They were one of the teams we expected to be and, and interest coming into LPL. How far yeah. can they go? How, mu how much higher can they push themselves? And this might have been a very messy series, but they just took down a team that came into the day 6-0 in the LPL.